Hey there, welcome in that new Golem tutorial about the Golem Profiler tool which has been introduced into Golem 7.3.2 So here I'm just having a simple scene uh, There's no layout right now and you can see it's pretty interactive But um, as soon as I enable the layout you will see that we'll have a, a big performance drop so here I enable the layout. I can show you here. I'm having a couple of layers here. Uh, duplicating characters, uh, playing time offsets, um, some stuff. And now you can see that as soon as I play it, it's really, really slow. So the whole goal of that tutorial is to show you how to use the profiler and figure out where is the um, time spent and how we can fix it. So here's the Golem Performance Profiler which is um, divided into, um, you can see four different uh, panels here, which are empty right now. And uh, we'll details what of this part do. So first thing is to enable the profiler. We're gonna refresh the cache, which will force an update of the frame 10 here. Uh, and uh, probably we'll have to wait a little bit for more uh, information to be displayed. Here we go. So that was pretty slow, right? So right now it's uh, showing you where the time is spent and uh, how many caches are loaded. So yeah, you can see it's taking a lot of time here. And uh, we're gonna also play two more frames here. And uh, to make sure that we got uh, the next frames as well. So this is the result, so let's stop the profiler. And uh, let's go into the performance bar graph. Uh, we can uh, zoom out a bit. So this is uh, the performance bar graph. And for each um, you know, uh, frame, it shows you where most of the time is spent. So uh, the biggest uh, part here is the create modified frame data, four seconds. Then the trajectory vector field, almost four seconds. So we'll go to that later. And the third it is the reframe data 1.48. Then on the left you got the cache frame activity, and here you can see um, uh, the the green lines and the blue lines. So here it represents how many frames have been loaded in green, and how many frames have been unloaded or destroyed uh, in blue. So you can see that. Uh, so in blue is the clear cache. So you can see that uh, here. When we refresh the cache, it uh, jumped down to zero. And then right after, which is pretty unusual here, um, to update the frame cache for uh, frame 10, we loaded 230, 240 frames. So here it means that to show one frame, frame 10, we had to load 240 frames, which is quite a lot, right? And then for frame 11 and 12, it's it's pretty low number, so, uh, um, it, those ones are pretty normal, but that one is really unusual uh, to load that many frames. Then the next part is going to be uh, uh, the cache state. Um, it just show at each moment how many frames are loaded within the cache. So let's zoom in a bit. So here we can see that in green are all the frames that have been uh, loaded. And we can see that there are a lot of frames here being loaded. So let's check why there are so many frames. And finally, the, the last part of the profiler is the performance timeline. We can uh, zoom out uh, as well. And this one shows you like precisely where the time is spent as a hierarchy of processes. And uh, we'll come back to that one a bit later as well. So first, let's go back into the back graph. So most of the time right now is spent uh, within uh, so 11 seconds here uh, to to display one frame to refresh one frame it's taking 11 seconds so it's taking really long time here and um, amongst the three different performances it that we had the create modified frame data the read frame data and the trajectory vector field we're gonna first concentrate on the trajectory vector field which is taking three point 75 seconds. So let's see why we're taking so much time here. So to discover, uh, let's go back into the performance timeline and uh, let's move and zoom out. So 
this one is uh, the update for the frame 10 and uh, we can see that um, the update for the frame 10 is uh, taking a lot of time so it's uh, the load entities in CrowdFit 1 which is expected and then the create modify frame 10 which is expected and then the layout transformation which is where all the layers of the layout are being applied and we can see right below the trajectory vector field for the frame 10 and uh, that one is taking most of the time of the layout transformation so uh, like 90% here of the time almost is being spent into the trajectory vector field of that process so why is that? so if we go like uh, below we can see that uh, uh, to play the frame 10 it's loading the frame 9 so this is why we're having trajectory vector field of frame 9 so it's asking for the frame 9 to load and the 9 frame need the frame 8 and the frame 8 is going to require the frame 7 and so on and so forth so this is you know this is the design here trajectory vector field um, needs to rely on previous frame to know how to compute the trajectory for the character so uh, that's expected but let, just keep in mind uh, this is where, uh, when you're using the trajectory vector field, you'll probably have a, a, a pretty heavy performance hit because all the previous frame need to be loaded here. So, what? Uh, well, there's there's not much to do here. Uh, we can just um, like disable uh, the vector field, and um, but just keep in mind that um, that node here, you really need to use it if you. Well, you you need it. You use it only if you really need it, right? Uh, else, it will really take a lot of time, or maybe add it at the end. So let's go back. Um, start the profiler and add that the vector field has been uh, uh, removed. Refresh the cache. Um, go into the frame ten and play two other frames and cut down the profiler. So now we got uh, now the performance bar graph. Let's see. So now we can see it's uh, quite different, right? We don't have that. Uh, uh, big trajectory vector field and uh, instead of the 11 seconds that we had before now we're spending one second only to update the cache for the frame 10 and uh, now the main performance hit is going to be the uh, read frame data almost one second okay so read frame data is uh, the part where we load uh, the frame is from the disk so it's taking a a lot of time here so but it's probably mean that uh, there's still too much like loading uh, from disk activity here so let's go back into the cache frame activity and so before uh, we had 230 calls uh, we are loading 240 frames and now we are still loading 120 uh, frames so it means that to display frame 10 refresh frame 10 we we need to load 100 frames on cache so that's still quite a lot, right? And uh, if we look at the cache state, we can still see that in green here uh, and all this in green here. Um, but those are the frames which are loaded in cache, so that's still a lot, right? And uh, yeah, to display frame 10, we need to uh, load from frame 25 to 140, so that that's a lot. So. Let's check what's happening here. Let's go back into the performance timeline here. Uh, we can still see the update cache proxy from frame 10, okay, which is expected. And uh, we go into the load entities, uh, which is uh, uh, okay. So we're loading the characters, then lo loading the entities, then that's for, for crowd field. And then this is the create modified frame data and the layout transformation. Mm, let's zoom in. And uh, let's checking. Uh, uh, let's move a bit here. Okay, so let's check those uh, green uh, bars there. So the green is bar corresponds to uh, all the frames which are required by each operation here. So surprisingly, uh, here the rotate, they are apparently requiring a lot of frame. So each rotate here is uh, loading a frame, which is the, called the reference frame. So um, we need to know from which frame we rotate from. So you can see that one is uh, loading frame 50, frame 35, and uh, and this one is loading the frame 10. And uh, when it's reading the frame, it's also uh, reading for uh, a lot of subframes. So each rotate here, 
um, they're requiring a lot of frames. So this is where a problem here is. So the, the the rotate is using a reference frame here, which is different from the others. And each one we have a rot each time we're having a rotate layer, uh, it means that we we're going to require different frames uh, on top of that. So if it's not if it's not required, maybe what we can do is uniformize um, those. So let's go back into the uh, layout tool. So let's go back into the layout editor. So what we need is to figure uh, rotate of IG eleven. So let's figure where it is. Uh, so that's uh, granulation, some kill, some rotate. Here it is. And if we take a look at the reference frame, this is the 79, which is required. So the characters is using that 79 frame. So at frame 10, he's using frame 79 to know exactly um, to specify a new orientation here. So rotate and 9 and 7 now. Uh, so those are still having different reference frames. So let's use frame 10 as well. And uh, let's go back here into 7 and set it up to uh, frame 10. So just uniformizing using the same uh, reference frame here to avoid. And there's one more. Uh, so that's, yeah, here rotate ID 5. Let's figure where it is. It has uh, reference frame, okay, 10, which is good. That's the same that the other ones. And finally, we have at the end uh, an expand node, which also has a reference frame uh, 19, which is the idea of that expand. So where it is 13 and uh, here it is. OK, and it's using reference frame 20. So let's uniformize and put that to 10 as well. OK, so now we're using the same reference frame as a source. So let's try again. Let's go back uh, to our regular frame 10 here, start the profiler. Then we refresh the cache to provoke the chain of refresh, play two frames, and stop the profiler. And uh, see what's different. So that's uh, what we had before. And this is what we're having now. You can see, yeah, we divided the time almost by two. So we're spending like, 1.68 seconds before by reading all those frame caches. And right now we're spending uh, only uh, 800 milliseconds for the whole process and only 200 in the read frame data, which is uh, way better. So that's a huge cut, right? Uh, and uh, you can see from the cache frame activity here that uh, on the new iteration, we were using uh, 120 um, frames. Uh, f to display the, the frame 10 and uh, now we're a bit below like uh, frame 50 which is uh, well let's figure if it's good or not so here it means that for frame 10 uh, we need to load on cache on the from the disk uh, 50 frames so it could be normal but let, let's still check what's going on so let's let's figure. So uh, my my biggest part here is to my read frame data. Uh, so that's my biggest hit with 200 and milliseconds. Let's go back with the performance timeline. Uh, let's move uh, in here. So here it's reading uh, the uh, cache proxy for the current frame 10, which is what we had before. And you can see that uh, create modified frame data. So that's the layout transformation. And but even before. Uh, there are some frames which are being loaded even before we're doing any operation here. So we are loading some source frame from disk before applying any layers. So there's yeah, quite a few, probably 30, 40 or something like, like this. And uh, yeah, right below each frame, we can see the read frame data. So this is where most of the time is spent loading all those uh, caches from disk. So any frame which is uh, loaded before the layout transformation corresponds to uh, usually uh, time layers. So, you know, the time offset, the set time, or the frame warp uh, layer. So those produce some loading before the, the the layout operation are being applied. So let's figure if we have some uh, time offset operation here. So there's none there. Let's go back in the beginning, uh, rotate selection, and, uh, oh, here it is. There's a frame offset. So we're saying right now that we need to offset our characters by 50 frames, which is which is okay. That that's fine. And uh, right below, but uh, we can see that now we're having a noise. So it means that 
not all characters will be shifted from 50 frames. Uh, they will have some noise applied on top. So that combination of noise and noise step, uh, it corresponds to how many frames will be loaded for every character. So here, if we divide, we're going to divide the noise by the step, and it means that for each character, um, we may have, well, for all the characters, we may have diff 30 different values of cache for our characters. So it, sh it could be okay, it, mean it just means that you have a bigger variety, but if we put uh, a step of five instead of uh, just one, if we divide uh, 30 by five now, we just have six different values being available for all the characters. So we just have five times less um, caches to uh, to figure. So let, let's just check that. Uh, so let's go back to frame 10. Let's uh, enable the profiler, refresh the cache for the frame 10, and play uh, two of our frames. So we got the next, and stop the profiler, and see what changed. So that's what we had before. Uh, so re the read frame data is uh, 200 milliseconds, so that was before. And uh, now it's um, 58 milliseconds. So um, most of the time was spent by loading the caches for the time offsets to have those 30 different uh, time offsets for the characters. So once again, that may be something that you wanted. Maybe it's not up to you here. And if we go back into the performance timeline, you can see that's l way less frames than before. Before we had those 30 blocks, now we just have just a few. So once again, uh, just keep mind in mind, uh, if you got it, um, that's gonna be probably here. So what else? Mm, so the curl field one, 138, that said that's, oh, and connotation is 157. So this is the biggest performance hit here. So let's let's check that. So I forgot to tell you at the beginning here uh, that I'm actually using a, a different plane for the connotation. So right now, since my car are, are a bit shifted on the side. So this is what I'm using uh, for the characters to be adapted. So the simulation was made of the on the flat ground, but at layout, I just change the terrain uh, for the characters to adapt on it. And uh, if I take a look uh, to my uh, my uh, layout, I'm uh, specifying for each of my type of characters which adaptation they will uh, pick. So that's our ground adaptation nodes. So first, I say that uh, on all my entities using the stars, uh, I want to use a with I key ground adaptation. So it means that they're adapt properly. And then for only the cars, so entity type zero, only the cars, I say that I want to uh, only use the default uh, granitation, which is snap eight. So here it means that all entities, they're gonna do some I key computation on, on their legs to uh, um, to perform a really nice granitation. So you, you may need it in some situations, but maybe not all of the characters. Maybe the characters here on the background, they don't require that. So maybe this is the characters we want to apply the ground adaptation with IK now. So I can uh, probably select uh, those guys I want to adapt and go back into my uh, selector, which was specifying all the characters. Oops, let's uh, reselect. So this is gonna be my characters here. And uh, now I'm gonna set those characters as ground adaptation. So now only those entities will be adapted with IKEY and all the other entities are gonna use uh, the default mode. And uh, let's check if that changed anything. So let's go back into the performances, go back into frame 10, start the profiler. Uh, we're gonna also require to uh, refresh the cache to uh, clear that out and, and restart and play two other frames. And uh, here we go, stop the profiler. And uh, let's check. So now the granitation, which was here, was taking 157 milliseconds. Now it's taking uh, only 42 milliseconds just by turning that off on characters which will not require it. So yeah, we gained some time here uh, on that part. So that was a really quick introduction of the profiler tool. If you got any questions about it, uh, please let us know and uh, see you into the next video.